Hello, everybody. It's Friday, flying Friday. We are in Seward, Alaska, on our round the world flight. We are aboard our Canada Air, now Bombardier CL215. Yes, we crashed our Airbus on landing here. And uh, they were nice enough to fly in this uh, this uh, CL215 for us from Quebec. So we're gonna we're gonna take it and we're gonna hopefully not kill it. Let's try starting it first. Let's turn that up. Uh, it's engine right. Yes. Okay. Now let's not that there. Uh, no, we need this. Battery on, avionics on, turn our fuel tank to both. There we go. Yes, yes. All right, so fuel tank. Good, prime it. Start. Why you not start, plane? Start. Okay, I shut it down. I don't know how to start it back up. <sighs> okay, that's set. Let's just be silly here. Run that all the way up. Our avionics are on. Prime, prime, prime. Get the fuel flow. Our fuel flow is green. Prime it. Now start. Do have to hold that down longer. No. All right. Turn that off. Turn the auto starter on. Screw it. Uh, I tried, and I failed. All right. While we're in here, though, we're going to turn on nav. We're going to turn on beacon. I'm going to flip my nav over to GPS. All that off my screen. Not that. We do have to deal with that in a minute. There. Let's see. Okay. okay. Uh, magically, I have bay doors open. Let's, um... Actually, let's go ahead and dump all of our water, because it'll make it easier to fly. There. Close. Perfect. Perfect. It'll be much easier to fly. Go ahead and close our exit. Cool. Least a parking brake. Ask for a little pushback. It's always nice to have a little help when you're uh, when you're on a little little pad like this one. Where's the windsock? There it is. It is dead calm today. That's good. Okay, good. I was about to say, have we feathered them? No, we have not. Okay, we're good. We are good. Take a little bit of flap. Let's turn to pod traffic. We're going to take off on runway. Just the one behind us. That's 33, so we're going to go for runway. Can I make it off on 33? No. Let's, let's go for runway 30. That over there, you guys don't need to see that no more. Alright. Got power? Yep, we got power. Nice. Just gotta be careful that we don't flip our plane, right? Right. So, yeah, last time we, uh... Completely destroyed the landing gear of our A300. Oops. Oops. Well, that kind of brings into light what we need to, to consider. That there were only five Douglas World Cruisers. Only five. We have five lives. We have five planes we can crash before we're done. So if I were to crash in the next five landings... That'd be the end of our round-the-world flight. We would have failed. We would have. We would have 
done a terrible, terrible job, and everybody would be mad at us, and the cats and the dogs would hate us, and all that stuff. So we don't want to crash uh, four more times, because we've already destroyed one plane. Now, what that means is we need to keep track. Somebody keeps track. I'll keep track. <laughs> we have four lives left. So, yeah, I just have to be careful. Now, the next several flights are relatively benign. I think this leg is one of our longest in the next, like, several flights. Sewer so to Chignik. And as promised, I've looked up some information on Seward, because I didn't look up information on Seward last time. And I looked up information on Chignik. There's not much to say about Chignik, honestly. Uh, but we're going to talk about both of them, or at least mention them. I do love differential brakes. Come on. All right. Here we go. We're not quite lined up, but that's all right. Got a little bit of flap. Turn on those landing lights. I think we're good. Oh, I know what I wanted to do before we go taking off this plane. Put the parking brake on for a minute. This plane has an autopilot. Let's go ahead and set our altitude. Let's go for, oops. Let's go for 17, yeah. Oop, that's not 17, that's 17. All right, so we've got that all programmed in. It'll be GPS navigation. Let's get our GPS up. Just so that I can follow that wonderful little thing. All right, I think we're good. I think we are good to go. I can break off. Let's take to the skies on our flight to Chignik. Stay on the runway. Now, part of this is part of this uh, reason that I wanted to dump that water. Is I have to go up a valley. It's a dead ender. So I want to be sure I take that into account. Okay, flap should be up. We should be cool. Cool to cook with some serious av gas. Once we get up to a uh, reasonable altitude, we'll turn on warp speed. And that'll be, uh, that'll be cool. Now, hopefully I'll stay below some clouds, but I know this for a fact. Alaska is mountainous. There are a lot of mountains in Alaska. Last thing I really want to do is slam into a mountain. So, that being said, we want to, um, if there's clouds, we might end up flying up in the clouds just because I'm scared of the mountains. Just because I'm scared of the mountains. All right, let's uh, autopilot on. I want you to nav and altitude. That probably needs to go up some more. Let's go with a thousand feet per minute. There we go. Cool. So now our job as the cognizant pilot of this particular aircraft, because it does not, the autopilot does not handle throttle. Our job is to manage throttle. Our other job is to tap this master caution. Go away. Go away. Go, go, go. Thank you. Make it go away. I don't know why it blinks. It doesn't. I, I can do everything I need to, but it just it just keeps on blinking. I don't know. <clears throat> now, this is real world weather as of the moment of this record. Looks pretty nice up in Alaska right now. Yeah. Better weather there than it is here. Nice. Now, I'm not going to tune, or should I tune Anchorage Center? Eh, 
Nah, we don't need Anchorage. Well, let's tune to Anchorage Center. Let's just have them do a flight, flight following. I would tune the squat code myself, except for I can't figure out where the squat code tuner is. It's like, where, where is the squat code tuner? Hmm. Uh, acknowledge. I'm not going to hit that mountain, am I? That mountain looks ominous. Okay. Do you think we're going to... Make the mountain. Uh, yeah, we'll make it. But come on, baby, climb. <laughs> That's not the most amount of uh, leeway I have underneath me there. My concern is that right there. Kind of sticking up in the way. Uh, one, two, five point seven. So let's just do that by ourselves here. Why are you turning that one? I don't know. One, two, five point seven. Yep. Do you guys hear that altimeter? Three zero two four. 299 or 7 is beautiful clear weather, so yeah, we have to be aware of that. Don't know what we're flying into. That is a peak right there. It's just a little peak of a mountain there. Look at us. Just, just clear it. Yeah. We're just like loping along. Airspeed is good. Once we get up to altitude, then we'll... Uh, then we'll adjust our uh, controls. So while we're uh, cruising here, Seward, Alaska, located at 60 degrees, 7 minutes, 28 seconds north, 149 degrees, 26 minutes, and 0 seconds west. It is in the Kenai Peninsula Borough. And according to the 2005 census, they had 3,016 peeps. It was named after William H. Seward. He was the United States Secretary of State under Abraham Lincoln and Andrew Johnson. And in 1867, he fought for the U.S. purchase of Alaska and finally negotiated the acquired from Russia. And it was Russia at the time. It was not the Soviet Union. That was later. In 1793, Alexander Baranov of the Shalikov, Shalikov, good grief, Shalikov, Golikov Company, was the precursor to the Russian-American Company, he established a fur trading post on Resurrection Bay, which is where Seward is located today, which is pretty cool. It's uh, mile zero of the historic Iditarod Trail is at Seward. In the early 1900s, the trail was blazed in order to transport people and goods to and from the interior of Alaska and the part of Seward. So you get there and then you take your goods and yep, you go into the interior. Pretty um, interesting, I think. The total area of the city itself, it's 21.5 square miles, which is 56 square kilometers. 14.4 square miles or 37 square kilometers is land. The rest is Wata. According to the 2011 National Maritime Fisheries Service report, Seward is the ninth most lucrative fisheries port in the United States based on money value of fishes. In 2010, $69.2 million worth of fish and, sell and shellfish passed through Seward. It's a lot of fish. A lot of fish, people. 
and I've been to Brussels during the fish show. I should know what a lot of fish looks like. We're above 10,000 feet, are we? No, we're not, we're at nine. I don't care, I'm turning off my landing lights because I feel like it, because I'm a rebel. Uh, another major industry in Seward is tourism. It is the Alaska Railroad Terminus. And uh, it is home to a minor military installation in the home port to the United States Coast Guard, Coast Guard Cutter Mustang. Mustang, silly. Uh, yeah. And there's a correctional facility there. There's always correctional facilities. And a post office. Seward is unusual among most small Mexican communities in that it has road access to Anchorage. Yeah. National Scenic Byway and All-American Road, which also brings up bus service. As I said, it's a terminus, southern terminus of the Alaska Railroad. So they got freight coming and going along with people. It's a primary endpoint for northbound cruise ships. They often, uh, cruise passengers often get off the boat and they take the train further north to Denali or other attractions like Fairbanks. Their international sister city since 1968 is Obahiro, Japan. There you go, people. That is Seward, Alaska. I mean, it's not gonna, it's not like New York, but there's plenty of, I mean, I totally would go to Seward. I don't know about you guys, but. I mean, maybe, you know, I don't know. Maybe you're like, uh, yeah, I don't wanna go to Alaska. I wouldn't blame you, I mean, a lot of people don't want to go to Alaska because they think it's always cold. I don't think it is. All right, enough, enough about Seward. Let's get our GPS over here. So I can show you our route. So, <clears throat> there's Pod, Seward. We're going over here. A little up and about. Currently on our way to Enna. And we'll go to Tux, No Sky, AK, Zilko, Kubuki, Obuki, Aruyo, PDN, something I can't read because it's halfway cut off, Gekni, Puik, <laughs> Puik, <laughs> terrible name, uh, and then into Chignik. Looks like our long flight is No Sky to AK, followed by Tux to No Sky. Not bad. Nothing really super long. Yeah, those are the long, long legs there. Not bad at all. Take there's an airport up here where we're gonna ha hit the Edna intersection. Are we at altitude yet? No, we are at 12,000 feet. I mean, it looks pretty flat, but yeah, I'm not willing to risk it. Look outside cloud layer might be ominous. I don't know. I don't know. And like that, the cloud layer disappears. Dun, dun, dun. Trouble. All right, let's, uh, let's speed this, uh, boat up. It's a boat now. For reasons of, uh, of alliteration. It's not even alliteration, but just for reasons. 13,000 and climbing. Nice day, eh? Nice day, eh? <laughs> Interestingly, often the coldest location in the United States during the winter is not Alaska. It's actually in northern Minnesota. Because northern Minnesota is insane. Cold. Very cold. I can say these things. I've been there. <laughs> oh my. What's this? Pedo heat. 
sure. Let's turn on some pedo heat, just in case. We are our 16, 15 nautical miles from Edna. And we're leveling off. Yay! Okay, so now that we're leveling off, let's go over here. If it's control shift. Yep. That'll do that. And then shift. Oh, control. Yep. Let's pull that thing off of high RPM there. Kind of a cruise. There we go. That should, that should idle it down a little bit. Conserve a little bit of fuel. Because my top concern about every single one of these legs is fuel. It wasn't a concern last time because I was flying a freaking jetliner that had plenty of fuel. But my concern every time I fly these guys is all about fuel. Anchorage Center, 119.7. We're going to do that ourselves. One, one, nine. Oh, that's one, one, nine point seven. Perfect. Three, zero, two, five is our altimeter. So increasing pressure. So we're entering a high pressure system. Looks nice outside. I mean, the sun's shining. The moon is up. <laughs> uh, I think from the, I think we can even see. Quit being silly, FSX. Thank you. Oh look, there's the airport that we that was at the Edna intersection. Hi, airport. Bye, airport. <laughs> On the bright side. This plane is capable of landing on the water. So if we ran out of fuel and we were over water, it wouldn't be terrible. Now it wouldn't be my preferred <laughs> preferred thing to happen, but at least if we ran out of fuel, because it's a prop plane, it has the longer wings capable of gliding. And it's capable of landing on water and land so we just find wherever we want to land to put the plane down. Call the Coast Guard. Help! I want to say <clears throat> that in real life this plane is not fully capable of sitting on the water. But I'm not 100% sure. I think it's just supposed to be a scooper. But I don't think that's modelable here in Flight Simulator, so I think it just floats. There you go. How many of you have been to Alaska? How many of you have been to Seward? Since it is the northern terminus to uh, Alaskan cruises, Maybe some of you have been on cruises that terminated in Seward. I admit I have not been to Alaska yet. That will change. I'm confident of that. When that'll change, I don't know, but it didn't change. I'll go to Alaska one day. Cruising along toward Tux. We are now 15 nautical miles from Tux. Sweet. This looks like it's going to be a nice, easy, just kicking back, relaxed flight. I've now cursed myself by saying that. Bridge Center on 125.9. And there. Still 3025, okay. Things are good, I guess. Mm. It's 
to go with? Fine. One three three point eight. One three three. Nope, other way. Point eight. What's up, Anchorage Center? You're so businesslike, Anchorage Center. So businesslike. I can't remember now if we actually go to Vietnam on this flight. Not this flight, but this round the world thing. Because if so, we're totally going to do Good Morning Vietnam. Totally. I guess I could do like, Good Morning Anchor! But that's silly. Never mind. Forget I said that. Uh, we've passed Tux, by the way, which I'm sure you've guessed. We are headed to No Sky. 60 four nautical miles. What are you? Kneeboard! No briefing available. Uh, checklist! No checklist available. Okay, goodbye. Wow, 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 wow. Strobin! Stro... <laughs> okay. Enough, I'll stop. With those lights. Okay, I'll stop. Land, sea. Can't actually select anything. That's actually kind of sad. Oh, sad pandas. Cow flops. How many of you know what cow flaps are for? and when you should use them and when you should not use them anybody if you know what they're for when to use them put that in the comments too along with whether you've been to Alaska Seward or Chignik cruising along in my bombardier a particular oh well I guess that wouldn't work I'm trying to remember this lyric cruising along in my riding along in my bombardier one particular place to go I'm terrible at changing names what okay 118.8 okay 118.8 118.8 one, one, no, that. Thank you. Whoa, 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 whoa. Bouncy, 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 bouncy pants. One, one, eight point eight. What's up, Anchorage Center? Thanks. You're boring. <laughs> uh, boring Anchorage Center. Oh, look at the pretty mountains. Oh, aren't they pretty? Those ones are snowy, these ones are not. For reasons. It looks nice and clear ahead of us. I'm waiting until we're about halfway to Chignik to talk about Chignik. I don't know where the halfway point is, mind you. Actually, I think the halfway point is about no sky which is 32 nautical miles away. But I don't know. Maybe part way to AK. Eh. Yeah, we'll, we'll say somewhere in there. A pretty air, air, air crane. No, it's an airplane there. Yes, it is. It is an airplane. Beautiful radials turning over. Hey, that was a mountain back there. We flew over it. <laughs> it's a good thing, too. Because <laughs> uh, I was so paying attention to that. Hey, dude, what's up? You enjoying the flight? Doop, doop, doop. Ah, he left. Ugh. 
He always leaves when I show up. Such a jerk. I checked Chick Nick's uh, airport, by the way. It is a short field gravel air uh, runway. So, yeah. Suffice it to say, <clears throat> it's a good thing we're flying this plane. Mall, 5 Niner November. Mall, shopping all night long. <laughs> we're doing 169 knots of ground speed, even though we're doing 143. Ho, 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 ho. I called it as it popped up 143 knots. That is awesome. I am psychic. Or I can read a gauge. One or the other. Mooney! What's up, Mooney? November 58222. You kill? Cool? Come back? No? Fine, don't talk to me. Jerk. We are four nautical miles from no sky. Strangely, there's sky at no sky. I think there's a runway somewhere underneath us. There's probably a lot of runways underneath us somewhere. Or not, there's a mountain underneath us. Well, there you go. No runway, just a mountain. A lot of water. A lot of water. Oh, there's a runway over there. I shall name that runway Ringo the Runway. Ringo the Runway. That is a mountainous bit of mountain out there. Should we talk about Chignik? Okay, we'll talk about Chignik. Chignik is located at 56 degrees, 17 minutes, 54 seconds north, 158 degrees, 28 minutes, 16 seconds west. It is in the Lake and Peninsula Borough of Alaska, 2010 census. The city, and we're going to say city, it's, it's more like a hamlet. <laughs> Population was a whole 91 people. It's a booming metropolis, people. 91 people there. Of this city, well, the city is 15.9 square miles, which is 41.1 square kilometers. 11.7 square miles, or 30.3 square kilometers, is land. The rest is water. Its elevation is a zero on the water. There is absolutely squat in the history about this place. Uh, other than Douglas World Cruiser landed here. I mean, the best I got on April 17, 1911, a gale blew ashore numerous ships, such as the Benjamin F. Packard, the Star of Alaska, and the Jabez Howe, a three masted, full rigged ship owned by the Columbia River Packers Association, used as a cannery tender. That's the history, thanks to Wikipedia. That was the best I could do. I was like, wow, that's awesome. And there is not much more. I mean, like, there's no discussion of economy. There's, like, there's nothing that goes on. I mean, the best I got is, is I found, um, again, on Wikipedia, because in the end, I just gave up, and I just went to Wikipedia. There's a picture of residents waiting for the Tustumena Ferry. So presumably, because they're on an island, they use a lot of ferries. And not the little winged ones. And there you go. Uh, but they do say they have a famous person, Benny Benson, the designer of the Alaskan flag, was born in Chignik. Woohoo! Go Chignik! Yep, that's all I had. That's literally it. I was like, ah, uh, right. 
But there you go, that's Chignik. We're gonna land here in Chignik. Doesn't that sound like fun? Just nod your heads and say yes, it does. It sounds like great fun there to land in Chignik. Clouds are popping up, little puffy ones, little, little puffy ones. See, that one looks like a dog. There's his nose and his ears right there. Let's see, what else do we have? Not really much else. The rest of the clouds look really boring and kind of make me sad. Some looks sort of like a... I lost it. For a minute it looked like a shoe, but then it changed. Now it doesn't look like a shoe anymore. <sighs> oh well. What can you do? You gotta spot the clouds fast, man. You gotta spot them fast. And unlike real clouds, they're computer generated, so they never look exactly right. It looks sort of like a duck coming this direction. It's like the attack duck. It's got little horns, so it's one of the demon ducks. All ducks are demon ducks. That is one thing that me and Dan at NerdCube can agree on. <coughs> Ducks are evil. We actually... I agree with him on a lot of things. <coughs> That's neither here nor there. It's just Ducky. Mall 5, Niner, November. One, three, yeah, five, Mall 5, Niner, Niner, November. November. Good day, Mall 5, Niner, November. Got 33 uh, nautical miles. No, we're not. We're 32. <gasps> it changed from AK. I just noticed there's an exclusion zone there. I wonder where that exclusion zone goes to. I can't see. But we're going to be passing Packin. What is Packin? Packin has an 8,400 foot runway. And a tower, it's controlled. Controlled airspace. Wow. Who is packing? Nearest airport list. King Salmon. Over here thing. Nope, now nobody can read that. King Salmon. It is the biggest salmon. This is the salmon that will eat you. Blah. Ooh, it even has an ILS approach? Wow. It's impressive. Let's let's see here. Where is Where is King Salmon? Hmm. Hello, King Salmon. Hello? Where you be? You be somewhere. Hmm. Are you below me now? No. I want to see the large salmon. You know what they should do? They should totally... Oh, there it is, right there. <laughs> they should totally shape the... They should paint it so that you see salmons. That would be cool. So salmons, or maybe if the airport kind of... Does it kind of look like a salmon? I guess you could say it looks like a salmon. It's like a hieroglyphics for a salmon. That's how you write... That's how you write salmon and hieroglyphics. And you have to do the little thing on the end there. And that says, that says salmon. And then this right here, that's the crown. So then it's king, well, king, salmon. Yeah. See, we learned something today. We learned how to write king salmon in hieroglyphics. It's a true story. All right, let's, let's get back in the plane. <laughs> oh no, where's my GPS? There it is. Go back over here to GPS. You're in my way. Tango, uniform, Victor. What? Okay. One, two, four, point eight. Tango, uniform, Victor. One, two, four, point eight. Woo, returning. No, don't, don't change that. Thank you. And there. Anchorage Santa, what's up? Thank you. I am a robot. Robots. Robots everywhere. They're taking over the world, people. 
They're taking over the world. Where are we? You're here. And that's the King Salmon leading. We are here. Where is here? Okay. Zilko is next. And then it's a bunch of stuff that's really close together. So when we hit Zilko, we need to start considering how we're going to descend to line ourselves up. Don't know which direction that runway is going, though. Huh. I wonder if I could find out. Let's see here. Um, where are we going? We're going to... Chignik... Airport. November 5, 8222, you're chasing me, jerks. Uh, publicly owned, state owned, public use airport, two nautical miles northeast of the central business district of Chignik. I'm sorry, a central business district? You have 91 people. I mean, never mind. Never mind. Um, can I get more information, please? Yes, I can. Not much, though. Not much. Uh, what are we facing here? 800 commercial boardings in the calendar year 2008. Interesting. One runway, designated 220. The gravel surface, 2,600 feet. Unattended airport. All right. So it's 2.20. We're going to be approaching from 180. No, we're not. We're going to be... No, we're not. We're going to be basically coming side beam onto this thing. So we're probably going to want to approach loop and go in. I mean, not that big of a loop, but a loop and then go in. Okay, yeah. We'll probably fly over it in a descent... Maybe out here a bit, and then loop it, and then go in. Something like that. We're almost to Zilco. We're almost to Zilco, people. Where? Oh, okay. They average... 67% of the flights going into Chignik are air taxi. That makes sense, because that would be the other way out of Chignik, wouldn't it? You'd either ride a boat or a plane. It's really all you got there. I was like, how in the world are people in plane in there? Oh, yeah, duh, air taxi. There you go. Things you learned. You can mark this down as things you learned today. What is our, um, we probably need to check some things here. So let's, uh, let's do a quick systems check here. Manifold pressure, green. RPMs, good. Co uh, cylinder head temp, green. Oil pressure, good. Oil temp in the green. What is that? Carb temp, okay, carb temp looks fine. Fuel pressure, good. Torque is good. Hydraulic pressure is, uh, it looks slightly uneven. Yeah, it is. We got more hydraulic pressure on the left side. All right. And fuel looks good as well. Looks like we're coming up on 50% fuel. That's not bad. Yo. Okay. Peace. What did you say again? 32. Hello, Anchorage Center. How are you? Not even a hello. Not even a how you doing. Thanks a lot, Anchorage Center. Fine. Be that way. See if I care. It's the way Anchorage Center is. I guess. I don't know. Ah. <sighs> 
Okay, we are 10, 9, 9 nautical miles from Zilko. I'm kind of considering descent, but here's the thing. We got to cross the spine here. I bet you that has some mountains. How tall would those mountains be? I'm betting they wouldn't have flown this route, by the way. I'm betting I'm betting that they would have flown because Seward is right here. They would have flown along the coast up to Chignik. One, because going over the mountains would have been nearly impossible. These guys, they're they're the upper limit of their aircraft was basically five thousand feet, so they were not gonna be going over any mountain ranges. So they would have followed the coast to get up to Chignik. Yeah. But still, I mean, we're, we're still doing pretty good. Uh, mountains. I don't see any mountains. Should we descend? <sighs> decisions, decisions. Those mountains are mountains. Those mountains are mountains. Why, yes, they are. Very good, Dare. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, but they don't look like they're 17ers. And I doubt anything over here is like... Oh, uh, I don't know. Let's, let's go ahead and... Yeah, let's head for whoop, let's head for fourteen. We'll start to descend because we're three nautical miles from Obuke. Two now. One now. <laughs> But we're, we're getting close. We've now crossed that one. And we're now heading for Oruyo. So we have to kind of think about our uh, approach. Interestingly. Let's look at this cut right here. See this little cut right here? I wonder if it would be smart to fly up the cut. Just ignoring uh, Piwak. And going like that. That be now. Uh, no, we'll fo we'll follow the flight plan. We'll follow our prescribed flight plan. It's got to be the smart thing to do. Fuel, fifty percent. Good. Mooney, you're chasing me. I know my plane looks really nice, but. You're not going to get any of it. It's my plane. My plane. Actually, you can have it at, at Chignik. I'm picking up a new plane. Totally. You can take it. I even give you the keys. You don't have to hotwire it. Maybe they're from the repossession. Oh, or, or I wonder if they're the insurance adjusters and they're mad about the crashed airplane. Why would the insurance adjusters be flying a Mooney? Logically, it would be because it's the only thing that can get into Chignik, but there you go. I think I'm being chased by insurance adjusters. Race! Race the insurance adjusters! I can't beat a Mooney in this thing. Don't catch me, man. Got to get a faster plane for the next leg. Got to dodge him in the town of 91 people. Of which I will probably stand out like a sore thumb. I guess that's a decent expression. That's a silly expression, actually. All right, we made it past whatever place we were. Oh, Ruyo, and now we're heading for PDN. Puddin. 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 Can't have your puddin if you don't eat your meat. There's puddin. Does look sort of like puddin. Sort of. Yeah, it does. It's like, oh, no, it doesn't. It looks more like a chair, but it's like an upside down chair. I don't know. It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> We're past it now. We're past that one now. Okay. I don't think those mountains are 10,000 footers, do you? I think I can go down to 10,000. Down we go. 9,000? Okay, sure. Why not? All 
Alright. Right. So Chignik's gotta be somewhere over here. Somewhere over the big mountains I will eat your plane for lunch. I could see why flying in and out of this place is the only way in and out. Did you not try to build a, a road? It'd be like driving along. Ah, I fell in the water. I know you'd build a bridge, but still. You've seen me build bridges, people. <laughs> you would go, ah, I'm falling in the water. That's just how it would work. Oh, magically we have heavy clouds. Good. Good, good, good. Okay, that mount looks dangerously like a 10,000 footer. You can't see it because it's behind the steel pole thing, but it looks dangerous. We'll have to keep an eye on him. Make sure he doesn't jump up and grab us. All right, so Chignik. Somewhere right over there. I see you, Chignik. I see you. I'm coming to get Oh, hey, we are coming to get you. Should have known. Dun 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 Look at those. I wonder if that's real. Big deep gashes. Probably. Alright, we are below 10,000 turning on landing lights. Because I am good at these things. Truth. Truth. All right, there's our plane. We're gonna have to slow our plane down. Sometime. Probably sometime really, really soon because Chignik is coming up fast. It is 22 nautical miles away. I don't know where it is though. All right, so let's slow our plane down to normal speed. Whoa! <laughs> Slam on the brakes and the camera goes, ugh. Uh, hide the menu bar because it's annoying. Hello, Chignik. Where are you? All right. I think what we'll do is we're going to get squawked at and go ahead and put this aircraft in a descent. We're also going to turn a bit remember we got 2 and 20 are our are our radials for our runway so let's uh, line up on those where would you be if you were an airport out here I'd be inside with a cup of hot cocoa fair enough fair enough Contact Anchorage Center on 118.5. Uh huh. Yeah, you keep going, Mooney. Alright, I'm gonna cancel flight following. Anchorage Center, Tango Uniform Victor, cancel flight following. Tango Uniform Victor, Anchorage Center, cancellation received. Squad 1200, frequency change approved. Okay, so now we're gonna go to our nearest airport list. We're going to go to... Wow, there's a bunch of Chignicks. There's Chignick Fisheries, Chignick Lagoon, Chignick, Chignick Lake, Chignick Bay, and Chignick. We're going to go for... Nope, not that one, because that got moved. Where'd it go? Chignick. <laughs> Tune to Chignick Traffic on 122.8. Select the runway for landing. We're going to be going on to runway 20. We're going to do a full stop landing. Position ourselves. Yes, two zero. Don't know where your runway is, mind you, but I'll figure it out. At some point in time, we'll, well, oh, hey, we're going to overspeed. At some point, we'll figure out where your runway is, but currently we're descending past these dangerous evil mountains that will try to eat us. Is that it right there? It might be. It's really hard to see. But I'm thinking that might be it. Based on my GPS, see it's got like mouth with a tongue. There's a mouth with a tongue. 
And it's on the north end, so that would put it right there. Yep. That's what I'm going with. That's what I'm going to aim for. If I'm wrong, we're in trouble. But I think I'm right. Ah, uh, famous last words. I think I'm right. It's looking more and more like airport. It's looking airportish. Or air tortoise. Or something. Hmm. It's a crazy, crazy land, Alaska. This should give us a long enough approach. We're going down now. Wow, 1,500 feet. Okay, let's, let's not do that quite so much. All right, we are at 60, now we're at 5,500. I will learn to read gauge. Do you think, do you think, do you think? I think I'm right, I know I'm right now. I'm like positive, 97% positive, mind you. Still, that's that's generally a positive sign. So, okay, we're, we're abreast of the lower jaw right now. <laughs> the lower jaw of the mouth. So there's the tongue and then the top will be, okay. So let's kind of turn towards it. that all the way up, Put that all the way up. There we go. Props are all the way up. Mixture controls all the way up. Keep going down, plane. I want to be down in the 2000s and probably less than that since our runway's at zero. That looks decidedly runway-ish. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that, Sid. It's gotta be. It's gotta be, man! It's gotta be! Oh, look, they see us coming. Ah, yes, then it must be because see how it's lined up on the airplane? Let we go look at the airplane. Yeah! We're cool. We're cool! All right, I haven't made a turn on the final, but we could announce we're on final just to finish the announcing thing, but. According to this, it's outside of my five nautical mile loop of my um, of my GPS device. We can we can sort of line up on it. Cool. Kill people. We're lining ourselves up. We're gonna make a nice easy landing. Then you have 500, so that's probably good because we just hit 3,000. Okay, we're now descending more because I just said 500. Fine, do that way. I don't really care. Okay. Let's turn towards it. Do not want to have a repeat performance. I got four lives left. We are sadly not cats. All right, let's um, get an announce run final. We're gonna continue descending here. We're crossing below 2,000. trying to kind of pull up, bleed off some speed since I don't have any air brakes in this plane. But I don't want to pull up too much because I still need to descend. What I want to do is I want to wait until I'm as slow as possible to put out my landing gear. So I keep breaking landing gear on airplanes. All right, 
So we got runway in sight. Yeah, buddy. Okay. I need you to slow down, plane. I need you to be as slow as can be, plane. No air brakes. This is great. Come on, plane. Slower, slower, slower. Gosh. Oh, gosh, a golly, people. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Gears down. Give a little bit of gas. I can literally say gas because it's half gas. All right. More gas. Flap. Oh, sorry, guy. <laughs> it's like flap speed too fast, you fool. Oh, gosh. Okay, come on. Come on. Don't you stare. Okay, come on. Come on. Come on. Touchdown. There, brakes, all the brakes. All the brakes. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. 60. Come on. Come on. 40. <sighs> okay, we might have gone over the runway, but we stopped before the water. Woo! <laughs> uh, we made it! Yay! We're Gibbons. Hey, look at that quick taxi to the parking area. Fast taxi to parking because I left the runway. Yes, I'm clear of the runway. Yes, I am. Stop! Oh my gosh, that plane just spun out of nowhere. Where did you come from? Where did you come from? Hey, what's up? I'm big. You're not. <laughs> Alright, turn off the landing lights there. Turn off the pedo heat. Alright, people. We made it into Chignik. E despite my best effort to destroy us in the landing. <laughs> just, which is awesome. Which is just awesome. Turn off the Jennies. Nope, not that. Where's the other? Nope, not that. Not that. That? Nope, that. That. There. Okay, good. We got it. All right. Oh, I need that. Come, come here. There goes that engine. Oh, come on. Come here. Come here. Nope. Fine. There. <laughs> uh, turn off. Fuel, turn off fuel, and turn off the battery and the avionics. Open the door. We made it to Chignik. We made it to Chignik. Yay! Uh, we're going to trade this plane in for something else. Our next leg is Chignik to Dutch Harbor. Most people know where Dutch Harbor is. All right. Until next time, it's been your Flying Friday. We, we are doing the Douglas World Cruise around the world flight. We've lost one plane so far. We almost lost the second plane, but we didn't. We managed to survive. Until next time, happy flying, everybody.